How do you get a better strategy and more profitability with your advertising on Amazon? Today we'll answer that question. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. This is the My Amazon Guy podcast. I'm now joined by Mike Zagari, the creative guy at PPC Entourage. Thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. Very excited. Well, uh, um, so for those that don't know who you are and what your company does, go ahead and give us a little background. Absolutely. I consider myself a recovering physical therapist. I don't even know where to I go with this. This is good. Okay. <laughs> I was a you know, physical therapist for 10 years, and it was one of those things where I loved helping people out, but I was just waking up in the morning just dreading going to work because it's not my thing. I'm an entrepreneur in spirit and in heart. And then one day I hired a coach who I just rehired and I'm like really excited about this. I hired a coach back in 2014 and hired him for a full year. At the end of the year, he goes, listen, Mike, I see you in something other than physical therapy. You're spinning your plates. I see you in importing and exporting. I'm like, what the hell do you mean by that? <laughs> Two days later, I get introduced to Amazon. It actually came through eBay, started working on eBay, then retail arbitrage and online arbitrage. And then before you know it, I was selling on Amazon. And then in 2016, we realized that PPC and advertising was really uh, the way to get a lot of visibility and a lot of sales. So we started really working with that and realized that uh, there was a lot of need to simplify the process. And that's how PPC Entourage was born and we've been going ever well, since. That is awesome. And I'm sure you guys do some really cool stuff at PPC Entourage. So we'll talk about that today. And we're going to get into the weeds on, you know, some tips and tricks and some ideas and strategies about how do you make those ads go profitable? So let's, let's start with that. So everybody knows you can get traffic on Amazon. That's the easy part, right? The, yeah. Yeah. There's, what's the hard part then? Profitability? Well, it could be profitability. So we start by knowing what your margins are. That's the most and key. That's a key element of all of this is know what is left and how much margin you have on the SKU. That will give you the information that you need in order to determine how much you could actually spend on that on advertising. We have a tool called the margins tool, and I can't tell you how many sellers we look into their advertising and we look in to just their overall profitability and we can see that there's not a lot of meat left on the bone. That's because of FBA fees. That could be because of coupons or return fees or various other Amazon fees. There's, there's so many different Amazon fees. So first step is to know what your profitability is. Once you have that, then you can start to come up with a decent strategy with your advertising. And we're going to talk a lot about this because what I realized a couple months ago, and it took me years to realize this, but I, re I kind of realized where Amazon was going with all of their different tools that they have set up inside of Seller Central and soon to be the advertising console. There's a ton of different tools and strategies that you can pull from all of these different features that, that they have coming out. And I realized, well, they're, they're, they came out with all of these tools and strategies to help us along in the customer buying cycle. And Stephen, I know you and I are gonna be talking a lot about this, but these different tools and strategies you can use using the, uh, all the different tools in, on Amazon, you can start to set up your ad strategically and then budget based on your strategy so that you could be more profitable. And what I mean by that, Stephen, and I'll go into more detail, is that for the more the discovery phase of this customer buying cycle, you can set a budget aside for that, which might have a higher ACOS, but that's good because you're trying to get that discovery. You're trying to get those re that reach, those impressions, and there's so many ways to do it now. And then for the campaigns that are doing really well, those are the campaigns that you want to scale the heck out of and be more profitable with. So there's a lot to discuss and well, to let's talk about the acquisition then. And so, you know, a lot of the times when we talk to clients at my Amazon guy or other Amazon sellers, they, they look at two numbers more than anything else. They look at how's my revenue and what's my ACOS. So obviously there's a lot more detail to that. And, and as you get in, advertising at break even makes a lot of sense in some instances on some products, right? Now, if you only have 3% margin to work with before you turn on your ads, that's a problem. Maybe you should raise your prices, right? But, or you got, the, you got a lot of other challenges to go solve. So we'll sidestep the, uh, the non-advertising challenges for the purpose of today's conversation. But let's talk about uh, some of the tweaks that you might want to make or some of the strategies or themes you want to think about. So you mentioned lots of different ad types and different strategies. So let's, let's start there. 
you uh why would i want to hire acos on some things yeah absolutely hire acos people see that and they run for the hills now first off if you have a high acos that could be because of many different reasons you know conversion percentage is a big part of that uh if you are not having a good conversion percentage that is something you want to start with look at your listing look at your images look at your bullet points all that stuff you guys have heard it before but you want to test that out because that's 50 percent of the equation getting traffic from amazon is the other 50 and then conversion percentage now what about the quality of that traffic i have seen junk traffic from a lot of junk traffic from amazon keep that in mind a lot of sellers they look at that ACOS number as like the golden standard and if it's super low, they're happy, except for the fact that you, you could also have a super low ACOS and a really super low conversion percentage. If you're getting those really cheap cost per clicks, that's 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 OK, but that's not it's not the end all be all because with a three I've seen a three percent conversion percentage that is super low with your advertising. So just because your ACOS is low from cheaper cost per clicks doesn't mean that you're fully taking advantage of your advertising on Amazon. And you were talking about a higher ACOS. So what are the advantages of having a higher ACOS at times? In that discovery phase that we were talking about before, where you're trying to discover new audiences, you're trying to discover the ASINs, the search terms, the keywords that are going to connect to your product and get a conversion, that's when it's okay to have a slightly higher ACOS because you're discovering things. But however, uh, Stephen, there's a budget for that. And if you have a budget for that and you have a slightly higher ACOS for those campaigns, then you can start to utilize your budget for those campaigns and then utilize your budget elsewhere for those campaigns that you want to scale. The other thing with regards to high ACOS or higher ACOS, look at your true ACOS. Now, we call, people call this tacos, true ACOS, ad spend margin impact. You can call it whatever the heck you want, but this should be around 10 to 12%. Now, you could have a higher ACOS in your account, but then have really killer, amazing organic sales that are just you know evening out that number to the point where you're spending 10 to 12 percent on advertising and it's okay to have a 40 or 50 percent ACOS because that is helping you out it's getting your research it's getting you more sales and you can make some tweaks to that over time so that's my case on why it's okay to have a slightly higher ACOS now it shouldn't be a hundred plus or two hundred plus then that's when you have issues and then if you dig into your account in what well, we use the margins account you're going to start to see that that 100 150 percent acos is eating away at your overall margins to the point where you're probably you're paying amazon to work you're paying know, amazon to work <laughs> so that's why it's, yeah it's not that's not cool uh, maybe earlier on it's okay but not that shouldn't last for the life cycle of the product obviously you can't yeah, and, and so there's obviously different strategies you'd have in the beginning or the middle or the end game of, of a product. Um, I want to sidestep launch strategies. I've covered that a lot of late. So I want to talk more of like the nitty gritty of maintenance and keeping it ongoing and what do we do next for this mature product. Um, all right, so you talked about conversion rate and obviously if I go on my listing and I change the title, I change the images or I switch something, conversion rate could be effective. Is there anything I need to do on advertising to improve my conversion rate? Well, first step would be find the keywords that are not converting. And that's easy to do. Uh, if, you, if you know how to download search term reports and get into Excel spreadsheets, you can do it that way. Inside of Entourage or other tools, you can find those keywords as well. There's going to be a lot of keywords that are underperforming. And by underperforming, I mean less than 6 or 7%. And they're like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5%. Those keywords that are underperforming is they're dragging down the performance of your overall account and Amazon looks at the performance of your overall account. So be mindful of those keywords, even though they have sales, if they're really low in terms of their conversion rate, they may be doing you more harm than good. Actually, uh, that brings to mind, uh, we've had several clients who have had click fraud in their account. Interesting. And what click fraud is, yeah, what click fraud is, for those of you, uh, you probably are all aware of it, but it, it you'll see it in the reports as a sudden spike in the click-through rate percentage, where it's like, you know, a normal click-through rate percentage on Amazon, all of a sudden it goes to like 10x that click-through rate percentage. So for some reason, people are clicking on this more than often. It, 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 you know, you start to see these patterns. But 
spite, coupled that with a very low conversion rate percentage because people aren't buying the thing. So that is awful, obviously, because you're paying for the click. And what we realized was that it does horrible things to your organic placement. So not only are you paying for the organic, for the ad, you're paying yep. for the pay-per-click, you're the advertising, it's impacting your, your organic placement. So what does that tell you about conversion percentage? Conversion percentage is super. So, what, so, what, so if somebody suspects click fraud, what do they do? First, <laughs> second, you can open up a case and they will do an investigation. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's not always, the, sometimes they find issues and sometimes they don't. Uh, we had like a couple of cases where it was pretty obvious and they did give back some money. So it is a confirmed issue. And you can totally see it uh, when you download the information. So, so if I wanted to go check my account, last 12 months rolling advertising data, download all the reports, I need to be on the lookout for high spikes in CTR, low uh, valleys on conversion rate. And is it in a short time period? Or does this usually happen for a week or two or? You'll you'll see the spikes. What we what we've seen is it, um, it lasts once you got, start getting the click through, click fraud. It lasts for a long period of time. Interesting. Until you say something because I think these are all done by bots and and farms. It, it, and yeah, is it just like a nefarious competitor, or do you think there's like a business out there that does this kind of stuff? I think it's a comp it's a competitor. And you know that being said, it's not too often that we see this. And the point was that <clears throat> when we do see it, it kills conversion rate percentage. So that's the whole point. Uh, and if you're doing your optimization, definitely consider optimizing with your conversion rate percentage. So click. Fraud was not on my radar until our conversation. This is why I was so interested there. Uh, went down that rabbit hole with you. We'll we'll uh, we'll put a pin in that one. Um, <clears throat> all right. So the other thing you mentioned. Uh, was a, a percentage rate of a good converting keyword was, you know, if it's six or 7%, it might be underperforming. What, what's a good percentage in your opinion for conversion? 10, nine, 10% is, is pretty good or more. Um, and then what's really interesting guys is we've, uh, taken a look at the data as well. And conversion percentage is interesting because we've seen that it's pretty steady over the last couple of years. And you can clearly see that exact match type has a higher conversion percentage than phrase, which has a higher conversion percentage than broad. What's also interesting to see is that top of search has a much higher conversion percentage than rest of search, and then pro uh, compare and then rest of search has a better conversion percentage than product detail page. Clear as day. And the third thing is the bidding strategy, dynamic up and down, has a much higher conversion percentage compared to dynamic down compared to fixed. So when you put all that information together, if you're looking for the best conversion percentage, dynamic up and down, top of search with an exact match keyword is the recipe. And 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 I think I think the secret is out on this recipe. I think most people have understood this, at least at the agency level and the sophisticated clients. Um, the one that I have had the hardest time personally trying to hack has been whether I do a bid modifier for top of search. Um, and I have tested this one a lot and I have not cracked this one. So I'm curious, do you have any pointers or tips on top of search bid modifiers using the same up and down strategy you talked about with the, with the other bid modifier, but just specifically top of search bid modifier? So we um, use these on our breakout campaigns, and these are single keyword campaigns that work really, really well for the keywords that we know have that convert really, really well. So those keywords we want in the top of search position. So we don't necessarily we we also want to be show be seen for rest of search and product detail pages as well. But the point of this campaign is to get that top of search visibility. So in that case, that's when you would use the modifier combination with a slightly lower bid, because if you do that, then that will lower your chances of getting visibility for rest of search and for the product detail page. So you would amplify the bid with the top of search modifier, but we use that in the situation where we have a breakout campaign. Also, we use that for ASIN breakout campaigns, which I don't think a lot of sellers are, are doing these days uh, or are aware of. Yeah. 
Where, you're talking about competitor race and targeting? Right. Now, but but now we're going to okay. reverse that philosophy. So now competitive ace and targeting, we want to show up on their product detail page. We don't want to show up for the keywords associated with that competitor's product. Because if you look at product targeting, you're not just showing up on the product detail page, you're showing up on rest of search and top of search as well. So if we reverse that psychology and we say, hey, we want to show up just on their product detail page, now we can do the up and down modifier, but we could also lower our bid low enough so that we're not showing up for top of search, rest of search, and then modify our bid for placement modifi it, modification. It, it does make sense. So, it, it does make does sense. Make sense so there? just to make sure everybody else can follow this, do I want to, tell me when I'd want to do this. Is this a situation where I've got a competitor and I just want to take this guy out and so I'm going to be plastered on his ASINs or is it more nuanced than that? Yeah, you could, you know, use it as a way to get a, uh, one over your competitors. But really what you want to do is dive into the data. And this is why, you know, you mentioned like the life, the, the life of a campaign. First, you launch a campaign and then you get the data. Once you have the data, now you can start to make these breakout campaigns and you can make the top of uh, the, the breakout campaign that we said for the keyword and a breakout campaign for ASINs and do this strategy that way. And the way we do it is if an ASIN has 10 or more orders, then we will break it out. And it really, that also depends on how much traffic this particular uh, account has. It may change to like five, we may use five or more orders, but typically 10 or more orders, if that ASIN has 10 or more orders, then we will break it out into its own. And is that ASIN gonna be like a single ASIN breakout campaign or is it a couple of ASINs or is there, is there a way to know single? Okay, interesting. Um, over the years, uh, I've looked at a lot of data and the more data I've looked at over the years, the more kind of just quick decisions without looking at data I tend to make. Now, caveat here, right? I obviously look at the ACOS, I obviously look at where the bids and the data suggest to go, but I did find myself increasingly making more decisions based on, I think this is a good idea versus here's what the data said. You're a data guy, correct? Okay. I can be. I'm also a creative guy. I, t I like to, I love the creative aspect of Amazon advertising, but I also look at the data. All right. So, so you're a hybrid. I, I feel like I'm a hybrid too, uh, but I'm increasingly more I'm weighted on the like, let me think through this versus let me analyze it, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so as, as you have increasingly looked at lots of data, uh, do you find yourself looking at more data or less data to make your decisions? Interesting. Um, I would say more data because we have years of data now to look at. So those, this, those, a lot of data, a lot of decisions is coming from that data. But what's cool about this is there's also all of these new ad types and all of these new creative uh, aspects of advertising on Amazon. And now we can start to combine the two where, you know, sponsored brand ads, sponsored video ads, you have to be creative. You have to. So First time you can like actually control Which text also, yeah. even. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of things and even like creatively in terms of the strategy. So you may have the data, but what about how do you use that data and where do you, where do you implement that data and where do you, how do you strategize to like think about where your customer is in the buying cycle and how can you can best leverage that data? So I think it's a beautiful combination and mix of. So, so let's talk creative strategy and all these new ad types. So I feel like a couple of weeks ago, Display, um, even though Display has been around, it was kind of re-engineered for Seller Central uh, and the cat is out of the bag and we saw a really high engagement for Display. So if you're not doing Display now, I think uh, it's, you, you know, the, the best of the best ad buying is past us, but it's still worth doing. Um, talk to me about what your favorite ad type is right now and, and why you think it's undervalued. Yeah. So my favorite right now is display ads, product targeting. And the reason why I think it's undervalued is there's a lot of strategy involved with how to set it up. It, first off, it's really easy to set up. It, you just simply go in there and it's a quite easy campaign to set up. However, there's different ways that you can use this because with category targeting, product targeting, you can target. Uh, if you could do a discovery based campaign where you're trying to see which categories are going to be would work for you and we have found that in some cases categories that we didn't think would work are working and we're testing out different categories and we're showing up on the product detail page. The reason why I love this so much Stephen, is because the, the 
actual placement of the advertisement is amazing. It's right below the buy box and it's right below the bullet points. And it's also showing up further down the page on desktop in big, a, a huge ad. And the other thing that's really cool about this is if you have the margin, it is also showing the coupons that you're displaying. So if you were doing subscribe and save, or you're doing like a 5%, 7% off coupon, now those two advertisements are married. And that is epic because you're getting this great placement Plus, you're getting the the enticement high of clicks, that coupon, high conversions, which is increasing. High clicks, high conversions. Who doesn't love that? Of course, you have to pay for it. You know that costs money to do that, but you have to make sure you have the margins to afford it. But now we have great premium location. You have strategy with these with these category targeting campaigns. And what I mean by strategy is, we can harvest all of the ASINs from our auto campaign and from our product targeting campaigns and sponsored product ads. We can harvest those ASINs and we can go after them in product targeting for sponsored display. I don't think a lot of sellers are actually doing that and that's a great opportunity. Or you can do category targeting with refinements where you have some kind of advantage over your competition. And I'm sure you've heard this all before, but I don't think a lot of sellers are doing it for sponsored display where you find the ASINs where you, you're more affordable or where you have more reviews or where you have prime eligibility and now you're targeting, you know, kind of like the sneaky attack on your competition and you're stealing sales ethically from your competition. The, the opposite of click so fraud. This, yep. To me, is <laughs> yes, the opposite of click fraud. So to me, if I had to get the most excited, I'd say there's a lot of opportunity there and there's at least five or six strategies that you could put into play right now that is easy to do with sponsored display. All right. So there's been a lot of changes, not only on Amazon and in general, the UI, the combining of advertising platforms, but and new display types and custom brand images on headlines, tons and tons of changes. So my question to you is, what do you think's coming next? What do you want to happen if you don't have a prediction? What do I want to have happen? What do you hmm. I, I would like to see more DSP options available to, to sellers. I think that's going to be, and I am not a DSP guy. I'm actually just diving into DSP, as I told you, Stephen. But I think a lot of that is going to be available to sellers. So a lot of retargeting and targeting off of Amazon is going to be available, which is going to open the floodgates to new advertising opportunities. And that's going to be really cool. Um, my biggest wish was a search term report for sponsored brand ads, and that came true. So uh, I'm really happy about that, guys. That's a huge... That's a, that's a wealth of knowledge with regards to optimizing and knowing what's working with sponsored brand ads. Uh, I love sponsored brand video ads. I think those are gonna be epic. Uh, yeah, I would say more retargeting and more reaching outside of Amazon to bring traffic in using some of the data and what we know about, um, what we know about shoppers. So, so I think that's probably great. my most frustrating uh, thing I couldn't solve in the last 12 months was external traffic into Amazon. Um, so June of 2019, we started testing Zon Tracker and using uh, synthetic pixels for Facebook traffic going into Amazon. By October, Amazon had pulled the plug on the API and then they started coming out with this beta tool where you could like, uh, uh, you know, track your Facebook targeting and your Google ads. It's still in beta, it's shoddy at best, doesn't even work as far as I know. And anybody I've talked to said, you know, doesn't have anything good to say about external tracking. So I have to agree with you. I think if Amazon can make their platform do the targeting itself within the platform, that'll be the game changer. Because no longer will I have to go on Facebook, make a couple of different creative ad types and wonder which ad was it that made the sale let alone did the ad make the sale to begin with. So I'm excited to see what happens. Those are some, I think that's a good prediction on your part and, and good wish list. Thank you. Let's check back in a yeah, couple months and see what happens. Everything's happening, happening so fast these days. And, and we're a part of a bunch of different beta, uh, beta programs. So I can tell you some exciting stuff is coming. That, that is exciting. Uh, so I look forward to that. All right, so last question for you today, humans versus robots when it comes to advertising. We've seen a lot of uh, talk about automating your campaigns with PPC tools, 
what are your opinions on this? What, you know, and you're, and I, and I know that you're the creative type who's going to say strategy is increasingly important. So let's, let's see what you have to say. Robots versus humans. I would say a healthy combination of the two. So what I mean by that is strategy and creative side that that's humans all the way, unless some kind of quantum computer comes along and it's like absolutely crazy. Who it, knows? Maybe those deep fakes will get better and better. <laughs> I, I don't know who knows. I mean, I mean, but think about this. There's so much creative. There's a huge creative element to advertising, Amazon advertising at this point, and it's only be, going to become more creative as as time goes on. Look at Facebook advertising. Like I see ads that are just so creative, so different, so outside of the box. That can't be replicated, obviously, through AI, at least right now. So the creative aspect in terms of creating the strategy and creative creating the sponsored brand ads, the video ads strategizing when to put them in place, but then using some kind of rule-based software or AI to do optimization. I think that's going to become increasingly more important because as you create more campaigns, if you try to scale those campaigns, it's gonna be more challenging to optimize those campaigns. And you're gonna need, maybe need some help to optimize those campaigns. Now we use a rule-based software, that's PPC Entourage, and we also have the bulk editor which requires a human to program the rule-based software, which is easy to do, and then also a bulk editor, which allows you to do a bunch of things all at once. Uh, I know a lot of sellers are using AI as well. So, I mean, there's a whole, that, that I don't have experience with using, but I've heard mixed reviews in that. Some softwares are better. So I, I, I th think I agree with you. I think a mixed, healthy, um, mixed bag of, of both will be necessary. And I uh, totally agree. I think creative is getting more and more important, especially as the platform advances into what I like to call the maturity phase. Uh, so if you're playing bingo out there, I, I tend to use the maturity phase quite a bit in my podcasts. Uh, and, and that's because I see the product lifecycle of Amazon uh, entering the maturity phase where we're getting harder and harder for sellers to sell more rules being put in place, and more changes rapidly rolling out. Well, um, I appreciate you joining our podcast today, uh, Mike. So if, so if others want to learn more about you or, or some of the services you offer, where can they go? So they can go to ppcentourage.com or find me on Facebook, Mike Zagari, Z-A-G-A-R-E. We have a community called the Entourage Seller Community where I post and do a live video every day and then post some cool stuff about Amazon. Great. Great. I will put those links in the description of our podcast today for those that are curious and want to click that instead of try and type it out. Um, Mike, thanks again for joining us. It was really pleasurable talking about ads with you. So excited to be here. Thank you. So All right. That's me. our My Amazon Guy podcast today. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And if you're joining us from the uh, from Mike's audience, we're a full service agency, everything from logistics to creative, SEO, PPC, and more. Check, uh, please, please feel free to subscribe to our podcast and thank you so much for listening.